American Pie. What's it all about? I'm Rod Saunders from Jew and Greek. American Pie is one of the most famous songs in the history of popular music, and yet most people don't know what it's about. Some say it's about Buddy Holly and rock and roll. Some say it's about America. Some think it's about nothing in particular. But recently, the song's composer, Don McLean, was on Tucker Carlson to talk about it. Now, first of all, I have to say that I was a big Don McLean fan when I was a teenager. I learned how to play several of his songs on the guitar and tried to emulate his style. I performed in restaurants for years, and American Pie was one of the songs people would request. It always impressed them that I could remember all of the lyrics. In the process of memorizing it, I felt that I came to understand what it's all about. And yet, in his interview, Don McLean seemed to disprove my theory. Here's what he said. I had an idea for uh, a big song about America. And I didn't want to write a This Land is Your Land or um, some song like that. Um, and I came up with this notion that politics and music flow parallel together forward through history. So the, the music you get is related somehow to the political environment that's going on. Okay, there's no question that the song was about the blending of culture, politics, and music. But I think Don McLean either doesn't understand his own song, or more likely he's just pretending not to understand it. Let's look at the lyrics. In verse 1, he's obviously talking about his musical hero, Buddy Holly, who died tragically in a plane crash while McLean was about 13 years old. That day of the crash was the day the music died. Now, I can totally relate to what he went through because my musical idol, Jim Croce, died in a plane crash when I was a teenager. I just walked around with a sick feeling inside for a week or so. I knew that I would never get a chance to see him in a live performance. In retrospect, it doesn't seem that important, but at the time, that has a profound impact on a kid. Some of you are probably too young to remember Jim Croce, so I'll leave some information on him in the description. And most of you probably don't remember Buddy Holly. I don't even remember him. He died in 1959. But he was one of the guys who made rock and roll an obsession back then, along with Little Richard, Chuck Berry, and Elvis. In fact, his band was named The Crickets, and that name became the inspiration behind The Beatles, who were originally called The Quarrymen. Anyway, in the chorus, there's a reference to Buddy Holly's biggest hit, That'll Be The Day. In verse two, we have references to rock and roll, building on the theme in verse one of his adoration of Buddy Holly. But notice he mentions faith in God, the Bible, and the salvation of the soul. In verse 3, there are references to a crown of thorns and the Beatles and James Dean. More references to the Beatles in verse 4, along with the band called The Birds. Helter Skelter was one of the Beatles' songs, and Sgt. Pepper was their most famous album. Charles Manson used the term Helter Skelter as a reference to the coming race war that he was trying to start with the Manson family murders. In verse 5, we see a reference to the Rolling Stones song, Jumping Jack Flash. Now here's where it gets interesting. Notice the references to fire, presumably the fire from the plane crash, the devil, and a sacrifice. Remember the reference to God in verse 2 and a crown of thorns in verse 3? Here he's continuing the religious theme. Then in verse 6, he mentions a sacred store, church bells, and the Trinity. More religious references. So why is he mixing in all of these references to rock and roll, religion, and Buddy Holly? I believe that this song is depicting Buddy Holly as the supreme sacrifice whose death gave birth to the religion of rock and roll, just as Jesus' death gave birth to Christianity. Now, if that sounds like blasphemy, well, maybe it is. But religious imagery is very common in popular music and popular culture in general. How many times have you heard someone referred to as a David going up against a Goliath? Or somebody had a Damascus Road experience? Or a traitor is referred to as a Judas? Or a doubter is referred to as a doubting Thomas? Don McLean was raised as a Catholic, and he certainly understood all of the symbolism in the lyrics. For many years, McLean was very cagey about the meaning of the song. 
One time, somebody asked him what American Pie meant, and his response was, it means I don't have to work anymore. Yeah, because he made a lot of money off that song. I suspect he felt a bit guilty for portraying a fallen human being like Buddy Holly as a Jesus figure, or rock and roll as a religion. Maybe he just didn't want to incur the wrath of the Catholic Church or something. But to me, the message is clear. The song isn't about America per se, or politics, or any of that. It's about the way Don McLean's generation was obsessed with rock and roll, and the way they deified rock stars. Some of you might remember the controversial John Lennon statement, we're more popular than Jesus. Unfortunately, there was a lot of truth in that statement. And over the decades, we've seen countless rock stars worshiped in concerts, with tens of thousands of screaming fans. So in a sense, a whole generation lost its moral compass. A generation lost in space, abandoned the faith of their parents' generation, and was caught up in a counterculture movement with its own music, language, and morality, plunging them headlong into depravity. And in verse four, we see that Satan is laughing the whole time that they bought into this lie. In verse 6, he mentions a girl who sang the blues, who most people think is referring to Janis Joplin. Joplin, Jimi Hendrix, and Jim Morrison all died from drug overdoses within a year of each other about that time. Don McLean was a business major, and he's actually a pretty conservative guy. That's why he was on Tucker Carlson. He's a big fan of his show. In 2015, McLean said, Basically, in American Pie, things are heading in the wrong direction. It's becoming less idyllic. I don't know whether you consider that wrong or right, but it is a morality song in a sense. I was around in 1970, and now I'm around in 2015. There is no poetry and very little romance in anything anymore. So it is really like the last phase of American Pie. So there you have it. And according to American Pie, it all began with the death of Buddy Holly. So the people who are all hung up on deciphering every reference in the song are missing the big picture here. Whether it's talking about John Lennon or Vladimir Lennon or Karl Marx or Groucho Marx, or whether the Book of Love is referring to a song or the Bible, there is a message to be decoded in the song. And it's a message about morality, poetry, and romance. You won't find those virtues in the Marxist, hedonist, secular worldview of the 1960s radicals. You'll find it in the values that America held to prior to the 1960s, when we still pledged allegiance to the flag, read our Bibles in school, and honored the institution of marriage. Buddy Holly attended Tabernacle Baptist Church in Lubbock, Texas. In fact, his song, True Love Ways, borrowed heavily from an old hymn, I'll Be All Right, and some say that he actually had plans at one time for going into the ministry. One minister even blamed Buddy Holly's death on his neglecting God's call on his life. So it would seem that Buddy Holly and his music represented a simpler, more virtuous time in America that was replaced with the music and moral depravity of the hippie generation 10 years later. This is all just my opinion, of course. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Am I reading too much into this? Or can you also see what I see in the lyrics? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.